Come around. Come around. God bless you for sharing with us this evening. We, we're in, uh, uh, we've come to the pinnacle of, uh, of Revelation where, where we're in. We're looking into a book tonight that is very pivotal, pivotal, pivotal. I can't get it out. Pivotal, yeah, that's what I want to say. <laughs> very pivotal uh, in terms of what Revelation is all about and how this thing is going to conclude. Uh, I would to God that you would uh, uh, compare notes with uh, present day environment activities and uh, compare it to uh, the word of God as revealed in uh, Revelation as is recorded by uh, the Apostle John. I wish you would compare notes uh, because we are according to what John says here and what he what was revealed to him okay in his vision it we are in the last days we are fastly fastly moving to the consummation of time and I think maybe the uh, exposition on Revelation 20 tonight might uh, give you some enlightenment and some uh, uh, some better understanding of uh, what I'm talking about right now, okay? But I want to do an overview of chapter 20, even before I get into uh, the depths of the uh, expository teaching tonight. I, I want to give an overview if the Lord says the same and allows me to do so. But uh, you want to turn in your Bibles tonight to Revelation chapter 20. I know that people uh, don't like reading Revelation or studying Revelation uh, as is recorded by uh, John the Apostle. But I declare as it, as the scriptures opens up in, in this book, uh, it's it talks about getting a blessing just from reading, not, not studying or meditating, but just reading this word that's in Revelation. Uh, there's a blessing in store for us. And so uh, uh, it's important that we would uh, study Revelation, uh, like I say, because of the time in which we're living and uh, and because of the blessing that we're promised that we'll get from uh, reading it. But, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to fear. And that's the other thing, because so many people fear uh, reading Revelation, talking about how scary it is and all of that kind of stuff. But remember what I've been saying from day one in this series in this study, and that is in, in Revelation chapter four, the beginning of chapter four, Christians, believers, uh, born again, those who have personal relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, are not here. They are not here uh, at, the remaining, at the remaining of this book after chapter four. Now, uh, Revelation 1 and 8 gives an outline of the entire book, which uh, most books of the Bible don't do. But Revelation gives you an outline. It talks about the before, it talks about present day, and it talks about the future. Okay? And uh, it's laid out like that for us. But after chapter 4, well, you, uh, 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 chapter 1 through chapter 3, in uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, up into that point, you're talking about things that have been, okay? Things that have been. But when you get to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, okay, the church is raptured out of this world. And you need to remember that because all of the devastating uh, things that happened, all of the atrocities that happened that is revealed to John, after chapter four, we are not here. We are not dealing with that. We are not in the midst of that. That is when the wrath of God is poured out on a sinful man. Okay, uh, but uh, okay, we'll we'll get into our study tonight. But before we do, let's take a few moments for prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for this day and the blessings of this day. Lord, you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to wake us up this morning. You didn't have to give us 
a portion of health and strength and that and that with our right minds. You didn't have to do that, but you've been gracious and merciful to us. And we say thank you. Thank you for the mercies that we've received from you this day. Now, Lord, we're here to study your word. And we realize, Lord, the truths uh, that we seek to uh, have unveiled to us, Lord, in this book, uh, cannot happen apart from your Holy Spirit. And so, God, would you uh, allow us to have access to this book through the power of your spirit, O oh God? We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. We thank you for uh, the, the revelation that you gave to the Apostle John. We ask now that you bless us, God. Bless us in your word tonight. Give us understanding. Give us enlightenment. May we be blessed at the conclusion of this study this evening. Lord, you know we are, we are needy people, and whenever we talk to you, we have to tell you about our troubles, and we have to tell you about uh, those that uh, need your prayers because you told us to do that. You said ask, seek, and knock, and you told us to pray without ceasing, and so we are doing those things right now, standing in intercessory prayer for those who need our prayers tonight. Those who are bereaved for multiplicity of reasons, you know why. You know all about it, oh God. And I pray for the body of Christ everywhere. I pray for your children everywhere. You know what their needs are. And I know that you'll take care of the apple of your eye. I pray, Father, for a sinner man, Lord, that you will speak to his heart and that he'll open his heart to you and it's mine that you might save him before his eternity too late. I know it's not your will that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. God, I pray that somebody repents tonight and turn to you before it's eternally too late. God, remember those that are on beds of affliction. We ask that you touch a body tonight and heal them in Jesus' name. We pray for children tonight. Uh, that's without parents. We pray for uh, widows without their uh, mate. Uh, we pray for widowers that without their mate, Lord. We pray that you sustain them in Jesus' name. You're able to do it, and I know you can do it. Take this study now, Lord, in your own hands, and we ask it in Jesus' name, and for his sake we pray. Amen, and thank God. All right, all right. All right. Thank you for praying with me. We always need prayer. All right. Now, I said I was going to give you an overview of Revelation 20 before we get started, and I'll do that. Now, there's just, there's just some major themes throughout this chapter, and I'm going to try to touch on them if I can just as a summary of this book. I don't know how far I'll get through it uh, this evening, but I'll do my best to try to uh, cover as much ground as possible. But here we go as we go through this book, as we begin to go through this chapter, rather. Now, and uh, hopefully my glasses will hold out, <laughs> my eyes will hold out, so I can get through here. But we start out, there's a... Uh, uh, 15 chapters, 15 chapters, I'm sorry, 15 verses in this 20th, 20th chapter, all right? 15 verses. And I tell you, we're fastly coming to, con to the conclusion of John's writing, and we're fastly coming to the conclusion of time as we know it, okay? And uh, about to embark upon eternity. First of all, uh, the, the chapter talks about uh, the angel that comes down to from heaven with uh, a, a chain, okay, a big chain, uh, and he's coming to uh, bound, bound uh, the dragon, as in verse 2, uh, that old serpent, which is called the devil, Satan. He's going to bind him. For a thousand years, okay? That's one one thing. 
that's in the book, okay? And he's going to put him in what's called the bottomless pit and shut him in, okay? Put a seal on it and shut him in for a thousand years, okay? Now, that's the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, all right? And we're going to expand upon all these verses as we go along. And then uh, verse 4 says, I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and, and judgment was given unto them, okay? And, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Those, I talked about that a little bit on Sunday. Those that were beheaded uh, for, uh, as witnesses of Jesus and the word of God, and uh, the, who had those who had refused to worship Satan uh, and uh, uh, his image and uh, those who refuse uh, to take the mark of the beast in this forehand and head, okay? And uh, that uh, is uh, going to be a theme also in this chapter. But uh, remember, uh, uh, the thousand-year reign, I would say, is central to this chapter. It's a thousand year reign, which is a millennial crime. That's when the saints of God shall uh, 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 be judging the activities that's going on on the earth at this time. Now, uh, the tri tribulation period has ended, all right? Uh, the seven year tri tribulation period has ended, and uh, 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 now we're into another period of. Uh, of uh, wh what we would refer to as eternity. Still in time, by the way, y'all. <laughs> not, not the saints of God, but uh, still in time, all right? And then he uh, talks in verse 6 about the uh, first resurrection, okay? Blessed is he that has a part in the first resurrection, okay? We'll talk about that as we go along, all right? And uh, we're talking about the second resurrection. It says, blessed are those who are part in the first resurrection. Then in verse 8, it talks about Gog and Magog. This is a, a wicked, wicked army that has been pulled together by Satan and his Antichrist prior to uh, the millennial reign, okay? Gog and Magog. Uh, look, look in Ezekiel chapter, I think, 37, 38. Uh, and you'll see more description of that, all right? And uh, let's see here, uh, mm, verse 10, and, and the devil that deceived them uh, was cast into the lake of fire. Remember, now, when we get to verse 10, we're about ready now to go into uh, the great white throne judgment. And oh boy, is that filled with activity uh, uh, for for wicked man, uh, for the evil uh, uh, men of, of the world, uh, that th this great white throne. Listen, you won't be there if you born again, child of God. You won't be at the great white throne judgment. Everything that's there uh, do not have a relationship with the Lord. All right. And the last few verses of this this chapter is talking about what's going to happen at the end. And at the end of this chapter, death and hell are cast into the lake of fire with the beast, okay, the dragon, all right, uh, going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And death, it says death also, will be thrown into the lake of fire. And it is that at that time, okay, that the consummation, the, the finality, would you call the final end is about to occur. We're then going into eternity. I know you don't hear this kind of teaching. I know you don't hear this talked about in church, okay? Because all we you all we've ever talked about was uh, 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 time and eternity and when the church is raptured, eternity starts and all that. Well, it, it's going to start for the believer. Believer to some extent, but the earth is still going on. Evil man is still waxing worse and worse. Idea 
of uh, where we're going in this chapter and the kind of things that we're going to be talking about as we go along. Don't know how far I'll get through uh, this book tonight, but uh, we'll do our best. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Also, I'm going to read the scripture with explanation as I go along. So I'll not take time to uh, read the chapter as I've done, uh, as we've done before, as we've uh, had studies uh, in this series. Uh, we've read the, uh, the, the, the scriptures as we're going to talk about them in the beginning. But now I want to read them as I move forward. Would to God that people would pay more attention to what's happening in this world, because brothers and sisters, uh, what's happening in this world, in this word, because this is why we're going. This is why we're headed. This is where we are now. Okay. And, and I know, I know our people, and I know how we. Are. Unless I'm hooping and hollering, as they say, unless I am uh, uh, tuning up and and tuning out, you know. People don't want to hear what I got to say. But you can't be tuning up with this kind of stuff right here, uh, which is another indication of the times in which we live. Uh, the NIV says, and, and, and a little bit different than how King James Version says it, the NIV says, in the last days, uh, men will not put up <laughs> with sound doctrine. Okay? That's what the NIV says. But the King James Version said they will not endure sound doctrine. They don't have time for sound sound doctrine. They don't have time for sound teaching, okay? Uh, but they're rather wanting someone to uh, tickle their ears, okay? Itching ears kind of thing. Uh, but itching ears, scratching your ears, you know, that doesn't really help you in terms of spiritual growth. And we'll talk about that on Wednesday night more about that spiritual growth and getting ready to get out of here. Because listen, the word of God is true. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word is not going to fail. What God says will come to pass. If you don't believe that, you know, there's no need of you reading the word. No, no, no need of you, you know, going through the motions with all that religiosity. No need. But everything God has said in his word will come to pass. Not just the good stuff, but all, all things that he said will come to pass. Heaven and earth, not what it Grass withered, flower faded, but his word shall uh, stand forever. So, so it's important for us to listen to the teaching of the word, not just always drinking milk, you know, that is easy to digest, easy to understand. No, sometimes you need a piece of, uh, you need a T-bone. <laughs> yeah, you need a filet mignon, you know. You need something that you can chew on. <laughs> It'll last you for a while. Now, let's get started here. Ah, tonight, 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 we're going to look at the first three verses of uh, Revelation 20, and what we're looking at is a thousand-year reign of Christ. That's the essence of what Revelation 20 is about, the thousand years, 1,000 years, where Christ will reign upon his throne with his children, okay, with his children. We'll be there. And verse 1 says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is called the devil, and Satan, uh, and, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations no more. All right? Now, during the tribulation, he's been deceiving like crazy. He's putting together 
an army of, 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 of based on his falsities and all of that deception he's put together. But that he, the, 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 the scripture says in verse three here, that uh, uh, they're gonna set a seal on him and that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years shall be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose for a season. Well, we're not gonna talk about him being loose for a season right now. We're just gonna talk about him being bound, okay, in the bottomless pit. And he's gonna be there for a thousand years, okay? So let's let's look in, into this and see how we can lay this thing out so you can uh, better understand uh, what he's talking about in these verses, okay? Uh, he says, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having a key to the bottomless pit, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, let me see. I don't, I don't want to run ahead. I'm going to try to stick with my uh, outline, if, if you don't mind. I hope you all are pulling that outline off of Facebook, because honest to goodness, <laughs> It takes a lot of work putting this thing together. <laughs> yes, it does. But I want to talk, before we get into the meat of the matter, I want to talk about the controversy that is found uh, in these verses 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Uh, the controversy as it relates to the millennial reign. Now, I firmly believe in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. But I say there's controversy and there are others who don't necessarily believe uh, in a, a millennial reign, which is a thousand years. There are those who don't believe that, okay? They have other beliefs, other beliefs about the millennial reign. And I wanna give you two or three of those uh, before I move on. Now. Uh, number one, that's what's uh, referred to as the post-millennial. And this view says that men will get better and better and will establish the kingdom of God and that G and then Jesus will return. I, I don't believe that. I don't know what you believe about it, uh, but this is uh, some Christian theology that you need to be uh, uh, familiar with. Now, that that's what I just told you is the post-millennial reign of Christ, all right? And it says that men will get better and better. <laughs> if anybody believe that, I got a farm I want to sell you <laughs> down in uh, Florida. But then secondly, there's another theological view uh, that uh, some advocate, and that is the our millennial, our millennial reign. Amelie. This view says that the kingdom is already here right now, and, and Satan is already bound. He's already bound. Now, if anybody believes that, I got some more lies to tell you. <laughs> All right. This view spiritualizes uh, the, 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 the scriptures. Everything they uh, read in the Bible, they spiritualize it. And, and a lot of times, that's what a lot of preachers and pastors are doing these days is spiritualizing the text and, and, and taking it to a, a, a point and place where God never intended for it to go. But you need to stick with the book. You need to stick with the book. Uh, but not only the post-millennialism and amillennialism, but then there's a pre-millennialism. And this is the view, uh, the view that says that man will continue to degenerate and when man hits the bottom, Christ will return to the earth and establish the kingdom. Now, this view treats uh, these scriptures uh, literal and uh, to some extent. And I think this is uh, this is what I believe, to put it like that. I don't know where you stand, but this is what I believe. Uh, there have been some 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 uh, some people who've asked the question even uh, uh, against uh, millennialism. Uh, but uh, there are several answers uh, for why 
uh, the, um, uh, the, the millennial reign of Christ is true. I say the millennial reign, not post-millennialism, not our millennialism, but uh, millennialism. And uh, the Old Testament promises, uh, this is a promise made to Israel. That's, that's one reason that I believe it's true. Secondly, it, it gives a public display of the glory of God, all right? Oh, yeah, he's going to be, uh, and it starts off talking about that in Revelation chapter 1, okay? <laughs> yeah, it does. Every eye is going to see him. <laughs> uh, number three, the answer, it answers the prayer, thy kingdom come, okay? Kingdom hasn't come yet, okay? Not literally. All right, kingdom right now is where? Where is the kingdom right now? It's in our hearts, okay? And uh, the kingdom is where Jesus is reigning. He reigns in our heart. He hadn't set up his kingdom literally in this world yet, but he's going to do it, okay? And uh, this millennial uh, uh, listen, is correct also because it answers the prayer, uh, mm, it fulfills the promise that the saints will reign, okay? Uh, I, I failed to get that verse of scripture that uh, I went to look for it two or three times and something got in my way and I didn't do it. But it's in, it's in, in some of Paul's writings where Paul says uh, the saints of God is going to judge this world. Now, uh, Paul challenges the church because of the evil that's going on and the wickedness that's going on in the church during this time. He said, he said, Paul said, y'all, y'all can't even judge what's going on with it. All the the wickedness that's happening in church, you can't even judge these uh, minute things. Yeah, how in the world are you going to reign with Christ and judge with him? And, and sit on and judge with him. Now I, I can't remember what it's from. Corinthians six. Huh? First Corinthians six, two and three. <laughs> my my wife is a Bible student. <laughs> she can find stuff for me. It's uh she said what? First Corinthians chapter six verses two and three. First Corinthians chapter six verses two and three. Now y'all write that down and go back and look at it. Okay? Write it down, go back and look at it. It talks about uh, us uh, reigning with Christ and uh, the saints reigning with him and judging the world. Now, that's another reason we believe in a millennial reign. And then to bring about a complete redemption of nature. Uh, Revelation, I'm not Revelation, but Romans chapter 8, verses 19 through 22. And, and if you don't mind, I'll just read that from the scripture tonight. Romans 8, 19 through 22. Another reason I believe in the millennial reign, which is to bring about a complete redemption of nature. And it says, um, uh, uh, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now. Okay? So we, all of not just mankind, but all of nature uh, has got to be redeemed, okay? And the millennial reign of Christ will cause that to be one day. So verses uh, 1 through 3 is uh, about, uh, the, uh, about, about the millennial, okay? Uh, but the most specifically, uh, uh, I gave you some doctrine that uh, if you run across it ever, uh, you ought to be able to challenge 
uh, anyone who does not believe in the millennial reign based on the information that I gave you. Christ will reign a thousand years upon this earth with his saint, okay? That's going to happen, all right? And we're moving, <laughs> moving in that direction, okay? Now, uh, the, the, the first part of the outline is verses one through three, and it's about Satan being removed, okay? Satan is going to be removed from this earth. Before the millennial reign can start, Satan has got to be removed. <laughs> you know, man says that uh, uh, man's problem is, him, is, is, is his environment. Give him a good environment and you will, and he will produce, uh, you know, environment will produce a good man. Uh, Jesus is going to improve man's living condition uh, drastically, but it won't have anything to do with the environment. <laughs> and, I, and I'll hastily say this, if the environment was the primary factor in man, you know, doing good and being uh, the, the, the creature God intended for him to do and to be, you know, it would have happened in uh, the Garden of Eden, uh, where uh, the Garden of Eden, uh, there was no evil, it's all perfect before man fell, you know, before he fell from his uh, godly estate and his godly condition, right? Everything was perfect in the garden, but, uh, being that it was perfect, it wasn't enough to keep him from turning to an ungodly state, all right? All right, so we need to understand that. So that's the first thing is um, Satan is removed uh, in verses one through three, but then in verses four through six, the saints is resurrected, okay? the saints uh, are resurrected. In, in verse four it says, and I saw uh, thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and uh, which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand, amen, a thousand years. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished, okay? And the Bible said this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On the second, on such, uh, the second death has no power, but they will be priests, and they will be, they will be, they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with Him a thousand years. Right there it is. Right there it is. We're gonna reign with Him for a thousand years. Okay, but not only the saints. Uh, uh, being resurrected, uh, the saint being resurrected. Uh, uh, but then we move to uh, the third part uh, of verses four and six, and that is, uh, no, I'm sorry, not, not verses four and six. I just finished reading verse four and six. Uh, but we're going to ring. Let me read uh, uh, something. Uh, and show you the state we'll be in when, when that shall occur, okay? 1 Corinthians 15, 52 50 through 58, all right? And uh, some of you may well know what this is. 1 Corinthians 15 through 58 says, and, and, and we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Yeah. You heard that before, I know. 
at the last trump of God, he said. Uh, last trump of God. Uh, uh, at the last trump, rather. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And then he goes on to say in verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks, hallelujah, be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, he says, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know, I said, as ye know, not <laughs> suspect, maybe wonder, about, but you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, okay? Now that's for those who have a part in the first resurrection. saints of God that shall be raised when Jesus comes back to take his church. That's the first, <laughs> hallelujah, the first resurrection. But then we look at verses seven and eight and we see uh, after Satan has been bound and after uh, saints are resurrected, then we see verse seven and eight, Satan is released again. <laughs> he released again after the thousand years. He is released again. But uh, during the time that uh, he's bound, a lot of wonderful things are going to be happening. <laughs> Hallelujah. The cow and the bear shall feed their young one, uh, shall lay down together. And the lion shall, shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole uh, of the ass. And the winged child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. Okay? All of this is during this period of, of the millennial reign of the Jesus Christ. You remember the song we used to sing back in the day? That shall be peace, <laughs> yeah, in the valley for me, yeah, one day, and it will be peace during the millennial reign uh, for the saints of God, yes, it's going to be a time. But then verse 7 and 8 talk about, uh, it's still talking about Satan's release, and somebody once asked the question, why was he released? Uh, why was he why was he released okay and and someone say well if you can tell me why he was set free in the in the first place i can tell you why he was released the second time around <laughs> yeah uh but uh satan is angry because he's been bound a thousand years he's been chained up for a thousand years uh first peter five and eight talks about you know, uh, his character it says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he made about. This is real, y'all. Satan is walking about right now as a roaring lion. Uh, I, I got a preacher that always says that, uh, he roaring like a lion, but when he opens his mouth, he, he doesn't have any teeth. <laughs> That's one of his favorite sayings. I make reference to it tonight uh, because Satan is going to be angry, okay, uh, having been chained for a thousand years. But even when he comes forth, 
and roars, there's nothing he can do uh, about it. Even there's nothing he can do right now as long as you stay within the center uh, of God's will for your life. Satan can't do you no harm. Hallelujah to his name. Whatever happens to us, be it good or bad, God is always in charge. He's always in control. Amen? Amen. He's in control. I thank God that I know that he's in control. Okay? He's been the devil from the beginning, and he's still the devil after being bound. And he's up to the same old tricks. Okay? Uh, um, and uh, actually, after a thousand years, and he comes forth again as Satan, uh, up to his same old tricks as he was before he was bound, okay, proves that uh, uh, Satan is not going to change, okay? And, and maybe that's one of the reasons he's released just to show uh, the world that he's going to always be Satan. He's always going to be that old serpent called the devil. He's always going to be uh, the dragon, okay? And we have to stay uh, uh, in God's will for our life. We have to look to God for protection. We have to look to God for provision. We have to look to God for protection because he's out to destroy us. Amen? But this proves his inability to change, uh, to prove, uh, and it proves the of the privacy, depravity rather, of man as well. But we look at verses 8 and 9, and then we see uh, the sinner's rebellion, okay? You would think that with all of the wickedness, all of the debauchery, all of the devastating things that uh, go on in this world today, you would think it would cause men, women, girls, and boys to turn to God, but not so, okay? It seems the worse this world gets, the further men turn from God, okay? Uh, uh, wife and I were talking today about uh, Pharaoh, uh, and, and when God hardened his heart. Well, God hardened his heart uh, after uh, God gave him the opportunity uh, to repent and to release uh, the children from bondage in Egypt. You know, he always gave him a chance to re to repent, but uh, he, he wouldn't repent, but he always, his heart got harder. Every time there uh, was a, uh, 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 when, when God allowed those different, uh, what am I trying to say, uh, the plagues to come on uh, him, and you would think that he would turn to God, but uh, he got worse. He got worse and worse, okay? And that's the way it is with man today. You would think as bad as things are, and, 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 you know, they get worse and worse. You would think men to turn to God. And, but they still won't turn to God, okay? Uh, Romans chapter 1 talks about that too because Romans chapter 1 says uh, uh, that, that uh, they refuse to, this, this crowd refused to turn to God, didn't want to keep God in their thoughts, you know, didn't want God to have anything to do with them. And so... God turned them over, okay? Turned them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that was convenient, all right? And invented new sins, <laughs> if you will. That's what they did uh, because they got waxed worse and worse. And that's what the scripture said, man is gonna be. Man is gonna wax worse and worse. The more he sees uh, Satan, you know, uh, 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 doing his devastating things, the more he's going to turn and, and go toward him. He's not going to turn and go toward God. He's going to turn to go toward God. Sinners are going to still rebel after 
the thousand year reign of Christ. Now, thousand year reign, things gonna be nice, y'all. <laughs> things gonna be wonderful on earth because Satan is gonna be controlling and ruling. And you would think uh, having that experience on earth where things are just made so nice and peaceful, you know, that man would turn to God. Not so. Sinners still rebel. Verses 8 and 9 says, and the suckling child shall play. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm reading something I've already read. Uh, but uh, it is talking about uh, what, what mankind will do after the millennial reign of Christ. Verse 10 says, uh, and in that day, that shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an, an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. All right? Now, what, we, what we're talking about here is uh, sinners' rebellion versus eight and nine. And I just read that to us. But you can go back and look at it. But uh, uh, there's going to be during this time a population explosion. As I understand it, man will still be seeking a better way than following God's way after the thousand year reign uh, of, of, of the best days that there's ever been on earth, man, uh, aside from paradise. Man is, is, is wicked to the core, apart from Jesus. Man declare war on God. What foolishness uh, is that? But here, pardon me, Satan, Satan's ruin. Satan is cast forever into the lake of fire, okay? No annihilation like some people would uh, want us to believe. No annihilation, praise God. What what glory awaits us as people of God, all right? What glory awaits us, but what destruction uh, waits for those who have followed Satan and go in his way? Revelation 20, 11 through 15 talks about uh, the great white throne judgment, okay? Verse 11 says, and I saw a great white throne, throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea shall give up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Okay. And death, verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. All right? This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Uh, th this is the great white throne judgment. Okay? Now, this is the day where the sinner man will have his say, if you will, in God's court. <laughs> they say, if I can just tell my side of the story, if I can just tell them why, you know, I didn't uh, accept Christ as my savior, why I didn't do the things that were right as was told, okay? Every sinner is going to have their day at the judgment seat of Christ. And then this is the last event that will take place 
before time is done away with. This is a passage and message that is intended for the ears of the lost and the dying, not for believers, not for believers. Yet the truths that are contained here ought to give Christians a greater zeal uh, for uh, the souls for the lost, the greater zeal for the soul of lost mankind. Because this is real, y'all. This is real. This is going to happen. Just as sure as I sit here tonight with my raspy and crusty, crusty voice, this is real. This is going to occur. All right? And whether you believe it or not, as someone once said, whether you believe in hell or not, it's not going to make it any less hotter than what it is, all right? Hell is going to be hot. Hell is not made for mankind. Hell was made for Satan and his angels. But if you choose to follow him, that's where that's going to be your eternity, all right? That's why the scripture said the wages of death, ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, all right? That's why, that's why I say that, because if you don't accept Jesus as your savior, payment for your sin, then you're going to have to pay yourself, and that means you're going to be paying throughout all eternity, because you can't pay for your sin debt, okay? Not all the sins we, we've committed, <laughs> we just born in sin, David said, shapen in iniquity, all right? So uh, that's the, we're talking about the great white throne, and, and my wife telling me my time, look, <laughs> I can't get nowhere. I need two hours for teaching. <laughs> uh, but uh, we'll pick up next time, we'll pick up next time, uh, uh, verses 12 through uh, 15, and because that whole, uh, the rest of this chapter is about the great white throne judgment, which is the judgment uh, that God will uh, 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 exhibit upon uh, the wicked man of this world, okay? Every deed done is going to meet him at the great white throne. If his name is not has not been blotted out, okay, he'll be all right. But if, if his name has been blotted out of the book of life, you know, he's going to have a terrible, terrible plight for the rest of his days. Uh, no, no, not the rest of his days. <laughs> all of eternity. That's what I want to say for all of eternity. And so I admonish you tonight that uh, you need to get get right with God while you have the opportunity, while you have time. Now, you say, well, you said time go on, go on, uh, even when Jesus came back to church. That's true. But the only way you will be saved, the only way you're going to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus is if you if you go into tribulation, if uh, you still here when uh, the church is raptured, the only way you'll be saved is that you uh, lose your your head is severed from your body. You'll be given the option by Antichrist because he'll be ruling at that time. He's going to give you the chance to acknowledge him as God. And if you don't acknowledge him, he's going to remove your head from your body. Uh, and I'll talk about that next time because it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to talk about the plight of those who had their head removed. And so if you don't want to spend eternity, okay, in the devil's hell, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And all you got to do is just acknowledge your sinner and acknowledge Jesus Christ paid your sin debt and ask him to forgive you. 
He'll do that. Amen. If you've never been saved, you need to come to Jesus while you can. You need to be saved today. If you will just trust Jesus by faith, know that he's real. He's not a figment of anybody's imagination, that his word is true, and it will come to pass. He'll save you and spare you from the terrible time of judgment that's coming upon all the laws. Yes. And, uh, uh, but you don't have to go through that. You, you can be saved today. And to those of us who are saved, this passage reminds us of, of the terrible need of the world around us, uh, the terrible need for us to be about the Father's business and telling them about the uh, saving grace right now of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, we talk about this chapter and talk about the contents of this chapter. It ought to move us to come before uh, 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 the Lord, ask him for power that we might share his word, okay? Uh, uh, for the salvation of souls of our friends, our neighbors, and our loved ones, okay? That they might receive Jesus before it's eternally too late. I don't know. There might be someone tonight who would like to receive Christ as their savior, become a part of the church uh, that you can continue to receive teachings of this nature so that you'll understand where we're headed, where we're going, and uh, you won't move forward in darkness in this world. Hey, if you want to accept Christ, Bible said if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in uh, your heart that God has raised him from the dead, raised Jesus from the dead, Thou shalt be saved, because it is with your mouth uh, that confession is made unto salvation. All right? Uh, believe it in your heart that Jesus died for you, and, and, and receive him as your Savior. Confess it with your mouth, and the Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. All right? All right. If you want to be a member of the congregation of the Minnesota Church, we would love to have you. I'd love to serve you. As your pastor, uh, we invite you to come. There'll be a document on the screen immediately following this broadcast. If you'll follow the prompts and the phone and the, uh, email and the, uh, Facebook, and the, whatever information, if you'll follow that information, it'll take you directly to a person who will be there to talk to you about getting right with God and getting ready to leave this world, okay? And that's what we are here for. That's why I'm here uh, twice a week teaching and talking to you about your need for Jesus in your life. And then, of course, we're meeting on Sunday morning at church now, 10 o'clock every Sunday. We invite you to come. Be a part of our worship service. All right? But more importantly, we want you to have Jesus. We want you to have Jesus in your life. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you is my sincere prayer. Amen. Have a good night. Have a great day tomorrow. God let you live to see it. And give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give him some thanks because we owe him if he gives us a chance another day on the face of this earth. We love you tonight, but I promise you, our love fails, you know, fails away in oblivion when it's compared to the love that Jesus has for you. He loved you so much that he gave his life that you might live eternally with him. God keep you in his ever-loving care.